I was thinking recently about some of the books that I have read on filmmaking over the years that really inspired me and uh, continue to inspire me to this day. And I thought it would be an interesting topic for a video just to go through some of these books, kind of look at what's on my filmmaking bookshelf, and just to kind of give a rundown of some of these books and why I find them to be of value. And then maybe if, if you have some favorites of your own, uh, leave them in the comments and I'd be interested to check them out. Uh, the first one, I'm just going to kind of go through the little stack here in no particular order. Uh, the first one that I'm going to uh, talk about is Making Movies Work. And this is a book that I was given uh, just as a young kid when I first got interested in making my own movies. This is pretty much, this is a good book for thinking in terms of how to put a film together from a formal perspective. So looking at different shots, uh, planning out your shots, different camera angles. Uh, this, is, this is not so much a how-to, but more um, how to think about films. Not so much how to make, but how to think about putting together a film. Uh, it's illustrated with a lot of examples from Hollywood movies, which is not always the most useful thing if you're just starting out and uh, trying to think about how you can do things on a low budget or you know a DIY method. But I think what the value of a book like this is it does get people thinking critically about what they're watching, even from Hollywood, and how you can learn from that. So this is the first uh, first one here in my in my little stack. Um, the second one is a book that I've also had for some uh, some years now called Making a Winning Short by Edmund Levy. Now this is a good example of a book that the a lot of what's in this book is uh, outdated at this point. Uh, just to be upfront about that, a lot of what he talks about both in terms of film making and the kind of distribution and exhibition opportunities that existed um, when he wrote this book and in fact, he wrote the book in the 90s, but I think he really talks about his experiences working in New York in the 60s. So it's, uh, there's a lot that is out of date about this book at that level. But, uh, and this is something I'm going to talk about with several of these books, I think there's still a lot that you can learn from the ideas that he puts forward here. So uh, it's not a book I would recommend if you're learning, uh, if you're interested in learning specifically the technical aspects of putting together a film in 2021. But if you, you know, I, I found it to be a book that I come back to uh, just, just to get inspired in terms of, uh, you know, putting a project together. That's something that, uh, like I said, is true of um, several of the books that I'll mention here. And uh, just to give you an idea, this, this uh, which I believe this is still the only edition, um, or the latest edition at least, but this goes up to talking about Hi8 video. So, you know, again, technically it's, there, there's, a, there's a lot here that's out of date, but uh, the ideas are still worth looking at. Uh, on a similar note, and, and going back even further, is Personal Filmmaking by James Piper. Now, this is a book I did not read growing up or when I was just starting out making films. I didn't even learn about it until fairly recently. But when I heard about it, I knew I wanted to check it out because this is apparently based on a course that Piper taught, um, I believe, uh, in California. I, I forget the name of the college. I'm sorry, it's the uh, Fresno City College in California uh, back in the 70s. And the idea here behind this book is that Piper takes a lot of the act, uh, activities and assignments that he used in his class and puts them into book form. Now again, uh, given that this was published in the 70s, uh, from a technical standpoint, again, it's outdated. But what I find really interesting here is that Piper lays out the assignments that he gave to his class, to his students, and gives examples of what the students did for each assignment. So it's a uh, it's kind of a fun way to follow along with the exercises, and to, and to read about the results that it produced. Um, when I heard about this, when I heard about that aspect of this book, I knew it was one that I wanted to check out. So personal filmmaking by James Piper. Of course, this is out of print now. Uh, I found my copy used. If that sounds you know if that that type of uh, thing sounds like it would be of interest to you, you know I would I would recommend checking it out. 
All right. Uh, now, this next one here is kind of moving out of the back, uh, you know, moving moving uh, out of the realm here in, in terms of um, being a technical guide. This is uh, Independent Filmmaking by Lenny Lipton, another book from the 70s. I believe this one was published in 72. So uh, this, this is kind of the, the last of these earlier books that I'm going to hold up here, but I'll just mention this again as another book that contains a lot of uh, good ideas that I think can still be of value to a, uh, an independent filmmaker. This one uh, is you know, subtitled A Complete Guide to 8mm Super 8, Single 8, and 16mm Movie Making. Um, I would say that if you are interested in shooting film, uh, books like this still, you know, still do have a lot to offer in that sense, and then in, in that way the technical information would actually be quite relevant, I think. But uh, if you're working on digital, uh, again, you, you kind of have to make allowances for the fact that these are not the most up-to-date books in the technical sense, but there's a lot here about the, um, uh, form, again, the, the formal and, t and technical aspects of putting a film together, you know, beyond the, the technology, but thinking more in terms of just how to put a film together that I think uh, could be of value to anyone just starting out making a movie or anybody who, you know, wants to get inspired, which is why I come back to a lot of these books. Now, the next uh, next one I'm going to hold up, actually the next few I'm going to hold up are books on directing by different directors. I won't say too much about these because I, I don't think there's, uh, it, it's, it's too much to try to summarize here, and if you're interested in these directors' films, chances are uh, you might be interested in what they have to say on directing. Uh, the first one here that I just recently picked up at Barnes & Noble is uh, David Mamet on directing film. I believe this one was also, uh, yeah, based on a series of classes Mamet taught at Columbia University's film school. Uh, it says, on directing film will be enjoyed not only by students, but by anyone interested in an overview of the craft of filmmaking. So if you're a David Mamet fan, uh, you know, this might be worth checking out, if, uh, getting a sense of how he approaches the directing process. Uh, another one I recently picked up at Barnes & Noble, Kazan on directing. Now this is, um, this is a, again, a, a series of, uh, of, of notes and, uh, you know, different breakdowns. He looks at uh, different films that he has uh, directed himself and it's a, uh, I believe that this covers both his theater and film work. I have not read the entire book yet, but it uh, covers both his theater and film work, which is an important aspect of Kazan's career. And if you're you know, interested in theater uh, and, and filmmaking as well, or theater as a way into filmmaking, I imagine a book like this would be of some value. Um, you know, I'm always interested in Kazan's films, so I was interested in reading about his perspective on directing. Uh, now, the next one is probably the kind of the gold standard for um, these types of books, and that is Making Movies by Sidney Lumet. This one was published in 95 and has been pretty much consistently in print. I think it's still widely used in film schools and is uh, probably the best book by a director about the directing process. Lumet really takes you straight through uh, his process of getting a film made. It's an interesting book, too, because it there's obviously a lot you can learn uh, about Lumet's ideas uh, in this, but it's also a good glimpse at how a filmmaker like Lumet would get a film, you know, through the different stages of production back in the, you know, 70s, 80s, 90s. Lumet is certainly one of my favorite filmmakers, so anything that he has to say on the subject of directing, I'm interested in, in listening to. Um, got three more here. I'll get through these, try to get through these quickly. Um, the next one is, uh, when the shooting stops, subtitled The Cutting Begins, a uh, film editor's story by Ralph Rosenblum and Robert Karen. Now, uh, if you're not familiar with Ralph Rosenblum, he's one of the, really one of the great film editors. Uh, he's not a, a, primarily a director, but he is, um, you know, recognized as one of the great film editors. 
And in this book, he takes you through the editing process, uh, gives you examples of different um, films that he worked on, different challenges that he ran into, and how he, uh, you know, how he met these challenges. Uh, lists just some of the films that he worked on. Of course, include the uh, the Pawnbroker, um, some of you know Woody Allen's best films, Take the Money and Run, Annie Hall. Uh, this is an interesting book because, again, it, it's a good guide to thinking about the craft and, and the art of film editing from the perspective of one of the, uh, you know, very top editors to work in the film business. Uh, it's a book that is, I would say, it's not primarily a technical guide. If you simply want to learn how to edit, uh, it's not that kind of a technical guide, but again, it's a conceptual. It, it gives you a way of uh, thinking conceptually about film editing, and to take you know the the basic principles of editing into into a uh, from you know from a craft to an art. So this is another another book that I have uh, you know would recommend checking out if you're interested in in the editing. And there's also a lot about just simply putting a film together that you're going to glean from reading this book. Now. The next one is uh, is one of my personal favorites. This this is a book that I think is um, uh, absolutely one of the best of its kind. I can't recommend it highly enough for in, especially for independent and DIY filmmakers. And that is Blast of Silence by Alan Barron. Now, if you don't know that name, Alan Barron, uh, his movie Blast of Silence from nineteen sixty one is one of my favorite films. It's a movie that I watch. I've seen it several times. It always inspires me. It was a groundbreaking independent film uh, made in New York, shot on the streets of New York. Alan Barron was a... Uh, he was an actor. He had helped... Uh, he'd been a, an assistant director, a production assistant on a uh, the film Cuban Rebel Girls, which was uh, made in the 50s. And after, partly after the experience of making that film, he decided to make his own movie. And he made Blast of Silence, which is a story about a hitman in New York at Christmas time. Very bleak, uh, kind of a psychological study of the hitman's, um, you know, his, his, his state of mind as he's making his way through the city at Christmas time to carry out a hit against a, a big time mob boss. Barron wrote the film, uh, directed the film, and played the lead role. Now, Barron, uh, after completing that film, it led to a it got it got distributed by Universal Pictures, and then that led him to a very uh, long and prolific career in Hollywood, mostly directing TV. So it it paid off in that sense. But his uh, but Blast of Silence is kind of unique among his work and being a very personal film that he. Uh, made entirely independently, and I think is a film that any independent filmmaker can learn from. There's, uh, I could go on and on about that movie, and I will probably talk about it at some point in another video, but for now I'll just say that Blast of Silence, which is Barron's memoir, contains a lot of excellent uh, background information on the making of that film, and though it deals, although it, the book itself really covers his entire um, you know his 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 entire life um, and his work in Hollywood as well. The chapters on Blast of Silence, especially, uh, I highly recommend if you're thinking about making you know an, your your own uh, independent feature film. Um, you know, anyway, this is yeah, this is a personal favorite of mine. Uh, the last one that I'm going to hold up here is is really neither a uh, a technical guide or a uh, book about uh, the, from, from the perspective of a director, per se. But it is a book I just picked up. I got this at Barnes & Noble recently. It was just published, and I really enjoyed it. So I'm just going to kind of put in a, uh, a a recommendation here. This is uh, David Thompson's A Light in the Dark, A History of Movie Directors. And what I like about this is that David Thompson, who is a uh, British film critic, goes through and looks at several um, key directors throughout film history, and it offers kind of personal essays on what draws him to their to their films, what makes them unique for him. He writes from the perspective of somebody who very much uh, remembers the times 
in the sixties, seventies, when film directors were a uh, were, were were held in a very high regard as artists, as auteurs, and he looks a little bit at why that was and how that's maybe has changed in the, in the current uh, Hollywood you know film industry. So, if you're interested in reading about some of the great directors that Thompson highlights here. Uh, I, I recommend the book. There, there's really no real surprises among the names here. Uh, it's people like, uh, going back to Fritz Lang, Jean Renoir, Louis Buñuel, Howard Hawks, Hitchcock, Wells, Godard. Uh, you know, there are some interesting um, uh, chapters here on, um, you know, women filmmakers and black filmmakers. So he, he, he presents a, a, you know, wide picture here. But... Uh, it does a great job of highlighting these different filmmakers and what makes their work unique. Uh, now that's it for my little stack, but there are just uh, two more off the top of my head that I want to mention. The first is a, another kind of a technical how-to book that I just recently came across, and it's called um, it's it's by Mike Carroll. It's called Naked Filmmaking. Uh, this is another book that I had read about and said, you know, I think I'd like to check this out because um, basically. What he, what Carol does with this book is takes you through the step-by-step -step process of how to make a low-budget feature film. And I believe this book has been revised. Uh, I, I think there is, I think there's a revised version that has more up-to-date information about the technology. That's something Carol mentions is that he, uh, he kind of likes to use the latest technology. So he has a good perspective on that. And I believe that the edition I read was talking about DSLR filmmaking. I don't use the DSLR myself, but it was interesting to read about how he uses that technology. And of course, as I always say about these books, the bigger takeaway is not so much about how, you know the, the, the technical aspect of how to use this or that camera, but what you do with it. Um, and he also takes kind of a one-man approach to filmmaking, as he calls it. So I think that also is something to think about if you don't have a you know crew to work with if you're doing it all yourself um another one i want to give a shout out to is uh the uh, uh probably the kind of the the uh, yardstick by which a lot of these types of books are, are measured which is feature filmmaking at used car prices by rick schmidt now the the, the version that i have is an ebook because uh, i have ebooks for uh, naked filmmaking and i have ebook for uh, uh, the Rick Schmidt book. The version I have, I believe, has been updated and retitled Extreme DV. I have to double check that. But anyway, it's basically now it's digital filmmaking at used car prices. And what Rick Schmidt does in this book is give people a guide, uh, you know, how to put together a an independent feature. Um, very, it's a very famous book, and I, I won't go into all the details here. I'll just mention it if you if you haven't heard of it you may want to check it out just just search for rick schmidt he's also a very prolific filmmaker uh one of the real giants of independent filmmaking since the 70s 80s uh he's done some really interesting work and uh so i would say if you enjoy his films the book is certainly worth checking out i know a lot of directors have cited it as a uh, uh as a big inspiration for making their own first feature kevin smith has talked about uh, reading the book before making Clerks, for example. So uh, that that's a I think that book is kind of a uh, an obvious choice for a list like this. But I want to mention it anyway. And finally, the last one that I'll mention is a much more recent book and one that I got a lot of uh, inspiration from, which is Cody Clark's Kill the Lion. It's a guide to truly independent filmmaking. And if you are familiar with Cody Clark's films or or you know follow him on uh, social media you'll know that he talks a lot about this idea of truly independent filmmaking. And I won't get into all that here. I'll say that's what I recommend reading the book for. It's uh, The book itself is, I think, serves two really good purposes. One is it lays out his ideas about truly independent filmmaking and what makes a film truly independent. So there's a lot of uh, interesting ideas there. But he also takes you more or less step by step through the entire process of making an independent film, uh, digital independent film in, you know, circa 2020, basically. So I highly recommend um, that book. That's, that's a good example of a book that has very up-to-date technical information. 
and as well as a lot of excellent ideas that I think, you know, that you 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 may find inspiration from. I know I did. So that's uh, Kill the Lion by Cody Clark. And that pretty much wraps up my little, uh, or not so little video at this point about what's on my filmmaking bookshelf. Um, I'll probably do another one of these with other books. And I know that there's others I've, I'm sure I forgot. And I, I, uh, if I didn't mention any uh, that you're a fan of, I hope you'll leave it in the comments and I'd like to check it out. I already I posted this tw uh, question on Twitter and got a couple of interesting recommendations already. So look forward to seeing what everybody else has to recommend. But anyway, that's what's on my shelf. Uh, and uh, hopefully it'll be of some interest to you. Anyway, talk to you later.